Uranium Friends Global Atomic. Uh, this is the GLO, so it's a TSX, uh, the the mother exchange, as we like to say when we have F tickers and convenience tickers. So <clears throat> quite the drawdown today, right? So <clears throat> excuse me. Um, this is what happens when you decide to get into a junior mining stock that has fairly uh, significant geopolitical risk, right? So there, there's a large amount of volatility that is attached to something like that. So, um, and these things shouldn't surprise. So, you know, we've been through this. <laughs> We've been through this with uh, the actual announcement and the actual occurrence of the coup, right? So <clears throat> a lot of people capitulated, uh, sold out all of their shares for probably some losses. Um, you know, I was a buyer down here. So now my cost basis is still below where this monthly candle has currently resolved itself, uh, regardless of that. You know, uh, I did post today, did take a small ad, and I am averaging up, which is, you know, interesting at, at, in the very least, right? So, um, yeah, this monthly uh, the monthly candle, I mean, it took out how many months of, of, of price action did it take out? One, two, three. And it's already into the fourth month of price action. So it's a big, big drawdown right um and the month is only about half over so you know we'll, we'll see how it goes with that uh that's just it you know there's mixed signals and mixed messages uh translation problems with the uh the article and what the junta has said it's whatever you fundamental guys can go crazy with that stuff uh just go ahead and and just like uh, the coup, which I didn't care about fundamentally, um, I use technicals, pure technicals, uh, when I made my entries here. And I made my entries based on the structure. That's right here, right? It held this structure. It was a sign to go, and it became a low-risk play, right? So if this structure didn't hold, well, yeah, I would have stopped out because, you know, the next piece of structure on this in this name is down here at 75 cents. Right. That's where the next piece of structure starts to take hold. So, you know, good play, all technical, didn't care about the um, coup whatsoever. I don't care about the news today. Uh, all I care about is the structure that I'm working off of. Right. And it's going to be this basically the same structure. So, you know, if we lose this, these coup lows, it's certainly very, very much problematic for this for this name. Uh, my guess is uh, we won't. Uh, so, and, and that is purely a guess, not based on anything fundamental. It's just based on previous action, right? So, you know, I posted this up in another chat group. Uh, just remember, uh, everybody was flipping out and capitulating. I was a buyer and I'm going to be a buyer again. I was a little bit of a buyer here, and I will be more of a buyer if it continues down because I have my levels. I have my cost basis where if these levels break, it'll be a very, very, very small loss for me. And then I'll just wait for the trend to change back in favor, and maybe I'll wait for some fundamental news. But regardless of that, we've had some structural damage uh, on this uptrend, right? And we've lost the 200-day moving average which is, you know, not the best metric. I mean, but it's it's something to, to think of, right? And we've lost all these moving averages, uh, you know, these shorter term moving averages. So, you know, this is a full candle closing at the lows. What does that say to me? It says there's going to be more drawdown. Um, I, what you want to start to see is you want to start to see the wicks. You know, we want to start to see the wicks. You start to see the wicks. Um, it starts to say, okay, there's buyers interested. There's a level that they're interested in. My guess is it's going to be somewhere around here, right? So as this news keeps regurgitating over and over uh, every six months or every three months or so, uh, it starts to have less and less of an effect on any given name, on any given equity at any given time. And that goes with bullish and bearish news, right? So 
when you start to see all this bullish news, which everybody was seeing uh, at these tops, you know, when, you know, Nostra Thomas was predicting we're making a big move or whatever, you know, when good news stops pushing the price up, uh, you could say that there could be some sort of consolidation coming along, right? So when bad news stops pushing the price down, well, you can start looking for a reversal. Okay, so these bottoms are a process, right? So we got these wicks. That's what we see. We have some wicks here, right? So this big drawdown started to wick and started to show some buyers having interest, right? You also have these volume profiles that you can work off of. So that's what I'm looking at a glow right now, right? So, you know, I've, admittedly, if it starts to break down below these levels here, you know, this structure here and this structure here. I mean, we could literally start to put a box here for value as a value area, right? Because it's it's proven to be a viable value area for this name. I'm just going to give it a little bit more, right? This has proven to be a viable value area. I hate when that happens. So it's going to be somewhere right in here, right? So it's this is this is the area, right? So this is the area that I would be targeting as a buyer. I'm going to be targeting as a buyer. I'm taking some small scales because, yes, I sold into this run. Uh, some of these buys I sold into this run, and some of my higher cost bases because I remember talking about it here. Um, I was a little bit of a buyer here uh, that got snapped out because of this news. So you know these higher cost bases shares. I got rid of them into here. So, you know, again, my cost base is now back down here and I'm pretty happy camper. This is why this drawdown, <clears throat> yeah, am I not realizing the profits I could have realized up here? Uh, great, yeah, 2020 hindsight, right? So, you know, I'll add because it's, being that it's geopolitical risk, major geopolitical risk, my position is much smaller than it would be in something like, you know, URA or CCJ for that matter, or NXE. Because there's no geopolitical risk there. These are big board names that they can I can put my stop losses in. I don't even have to look at them. So I can size up. Here, I don't size up. I can't put my stop losses in. Um, and you get this nutty, crazy moves on this stock. Which, you know, traders love this volatility, actually. So, And let's just look at the daily to see how it plays. Yeah, it's running into oversold conditions. Big deal, right? Because, yeah, look at this. So remember... Bottoming is a process, and you want to look for the process of the bottoming. Yeah, because anybody that bought here probably trimmed out to get risk free or to get the, reduce their risk, you know, and reloaded. Hopefully, that's what they did. I mean, that's kind of what I did just a little bit here, a little bit of an ad here, and then you just kind of catch the run. All right. So, bottoming is a process. All right. And, and the value area. For the life of this stock, right? It's here. It's in this box, okay? If not, then it's going to be down here, right? So um, who knows what happens there? And again, these, this is the fibs, by the way, for the life of this stock right here. So um, this is retracing. <laughs> as crazy as it sounds, it's only been a 38% retracement through all of this um, Niger coup action and all of this volatility, it has literally only been a 38% retracement. If you look at that on a quarterly chart, it's a bull flag, right? It's still a bull flag. <laughs> uh, you know, I know it's hard to stomach, uh, and, and for a lot of people, because a lot of people in this space, for some reason, don't want to look at charts. They don't want to learn technical analysis, which is probably one of the easiest things to learn in markets. And it's one of the easiest things to execute with, but for whatever reason, they choose not to do it. Um, they probably choose not to believe that that's the case when I say this is no big deal. And I know there's guys that are lamenting that it's a big deal. It's not. It's still a quarterly bull flag. It's still a monthly bull pennant. It's still a weekly bull pennant. Regard well, you know, I mean, you could there can be arguments, but if you're looking at the life of the, of the stock, it's still a bull flag, 
And it's going to remain that way <laughs> unless this gets breached. Then we have to really rethink this name in its entirety. Uh, if we lose this value area, it probably loses me as an investor would be my guess. You know, I don't know if I want to stand uh, 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 any more of a drawdown than that. Um, maybe I would reload back down here in this area, but we'll see how it comes. You know, right now, I am playing it the way I played uh, the uh, the initial coup action is I'm taking some small scales. And when I see the bottom start to form, when I see the process of the bottom start to reveal itself, I'm going to hit it. And if it breaks my levels, I'm going to be out. It's just going to be that simple. Um, that's it for global, man. Let's see what happens with news. And we will take it from there. But from a technical standpoint, there's plenty of damage here. But not really. <laughs> okay. If that makes any sense to you, you know, so that's why I'm still interested uh, looking at this bullish because, yeah, this is one of my longer term focused plays that, um, you know, I can't trade it the way I trade big boards. So that's the way I have to approach a name like this. And, hey, they've got a great resource. They've got a pretty damn good CEO. Uh, they just have a major geopolitical risk and that's what causes this volatility over and out